Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Before we get started, check out today's sponsor, Mashdrop. They're a group buy website with some amazing deals on gaming hardware. It's free to sign up and they've got new deals all the time. So check that out in the description below. Okay, it's news time and today's first story is a pretty big letdown, at least in my opinion. In a job opening for Microsoft, it looks like the company is going the way of, well, every other software company. Found on Microsoft's career page, they're looking for a product manager to be a part of a team that's, quote, being created to build and scale the Microsoft 365 consumer subscription. That's right. What was predicted at the launch of Windows 10 and certainly something I knew would happen eventually, Microsoft looks to be moving a bulk of their software, which almost certainly includes Windows, to a subscription-based model. Now, there are some positives and negatives to this. The positive being it won't have such a high upfront cost, but the negative is that you'll likely pay more overall. Plus, Microsoft would lose the incentive to offer a ton of new features and a big release to pull old customers over. With that said, other companies like Adobe have had success at doing this, though I'll say that Adobe software had a much higher upfront cost. Really, it's tough to say what will ultimately happen and what the average consumer take will be. With that said, what do you think? Is this a smart move or will it drive you to other platforms like Linux or Mac OS? Let me know down in the comments below. Next up for today, AMD's second generation Epic processors are going to be a part of a seriously powerful supercomputer. The computer is being purchased by the Finnish IT Center for Science and built by Atos or uh, Atos, I'm really not sure. But during the second phase of the build, which takes place in 2020, they're going to add 200,000 7 nanometer Epic cores. That's right, 200,000 cores in a computer. And each node will consist of 256 gigabytes of memory. Oh, and in the first phase for AI, it'll be equipped with 320 NVIDIA V100s over NVLink across four nodes. All in all, this behemoth is set to have a theoretical performance of 11 petaflops. Yeah, let's just say it's one serious supercomputer. Of course, set nearly $42 million, that's to be expected. Lastly for today, we have a pretty serious leak slash rumor from Andreas Schilling of Hardware Lux. In a tweet, he shut off some leaked marketing material for the RTX 2060. And as you can see, first it is RTX, which almost certainly means it'll have ray tracing. And I know some of you disagree with that, but remember that RTX is the branding because of NVIDIA RTX, which is literally a platform for ray tracing. Plus, video cards stated that it will come with ray tracing cores. Another interesting bit from Mr. Schilling is that besides the 6GB of GDDR6, which I've already discussed, it would see me tease the release date to be the second week of January. Of course, regardless of whether that'll ultimately happen or not, it's tough to say, especially with a ton of Pascal GPUs supposedly not being sold. The main question I've got, though, is what kind of performance can we expect here? I mean, the 2080 Ti can't push very many frames at 1080, so unless we're expecting to drop down to 900p or maybe even 720p, FPS probably won't look good. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Are you excited for the RTX 2060, or are you just ready to get a 200,000 core CPU? Let me know down in the comments below, and as always, have a great day.